Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. In this video, I'm going to solve two very famous related rates word problems. If you want to see some more basic examples of related rates problems for Calculus 1, I'll link the introductory video lecture here, but I'm just going to jump right in to a couple examples now. So first problem says, the radius of a right circular cylinder is increasing at a rate of 8 inches per second, while the height is be careful, decreasing at the rate of 9 inches per second. At what rate is the volume changing when the radius is 7 inches and the height is 20 inches? Do not round your answer. So first, let's focus on what sort of a shape we're dealing with. It's a right circular cylinder. So that means the base is going to be a circle. Whoa, that's not a circle. Come on now, there we go. The base is a circle. When they say right, that means that the base uh, and the top of the cylinder are at a 90 degree angle from one another here. Okay, so it's not a slanty cylinder. And now let's introduce some notation. They told us that the radius is increasing at a rate of eight inches per second. So that's a derivative, that means dr dt is equal to 8 inches per second. And then the height is decreasing, that's going to make it a negative 9 inches per second. And then they want to know what rate is the volume changing, so they want dv dt when the radius is 7 inches and the height is 20 inches. You're gonna plug those in at the very end, not now. So let's think, here's our right circular cylinder, here's the radius, it's changing, here's the height, it's changing. Do we know the formula for the volume? You should. When you have a solid, okay, and if it's a right solid, for the volume you just take the area of the base times the height. So the volume would be area of the base is a circle. That would be pi r squared times the height. And then let's just check now, did that relate all the variables that we are working with? r, h, and v. Yeah, those are the only variables, r, h, v. Pi is just a constant. So now we're ready to go. You find an equation that relates all the variables and then how do you get those derivatives in it? You differentiate that equation with respect to time. When you're doing related rates problems, you always take the derivative of your equation with respect to t for time, okay? Every related rates problem. So you're gonna write d, dt, d, dt on both sides. And now we need implicit differentiation. So derivative on the left-hand side will just be dv dt. And then on the right-hand side, since both r and h are variables, I need to do the product rule. And I'm just going to take the pi outside. It's a constant. And now let's go ahead. If I differentiate r squared, it's going to be 2r dr dt. Don't forget, this is implicit times h, leave it alone, plus, now I leave r squared alone, the derivative of h is going to be 1 times dh dt. Okay? That was done implicitly. Beautiful! I think we have everything we need to go ahead and find dv dt. So now is when we're going to plug in the r is 7 inches and the height is 20 inches. So we have 2 times r, which is 20, I mean 7, <laughs> times dr dt, which is 8, times the height, which is 20, plus r squared, that's going to be 7 squared, times dh dt is negative 9. Okay, so this is pi times... 14 times 160 minus 49 times 9. 
and this comes out to $17.99 pi. Since this is dv dt, the units are going to match. I have a v in the numerator, volume is always cubed, and then the units for time in this problem are seconds. So that's the rate at which the volume is changing, and we are done. Leave it like this. This is the exact answer. No rounding. Uh, my students don't get a calculator anyways in their classes, so this is where they would stop. Okay? Good. Now this one is a little more straightforward just because they gave us all the info that we needed. We didn't have any extra variables. I'm going to do one more example, a very famous problem about the inverted right circular cone. So water is being drained from a container which has the shape of an inverted right circular cone. So what that means is it's a cone inverted, so upside down. So it looks like an ice cream cone or a snow cone, okay? And the container at the very top has a radius of three inches and then a height of seven inches. And water's being drained from it. So say the water's up to here and it's being drained out. So as the water is being drained out, not only is the height of the water going to be going down, notice here the radius will be decreasing also, right? Look at the radius here. Once the water drops to this level, will be smaller. It'll get smaller, smaller. It's not like the last example. See how the last example, as you moved up and down, the height, the radius stayed the same. That's not the case for a cone, okay? So that's what makes this problem just a wee bit trickier. It's fine. We can deal. At the instant when the water in the container is five inches deep, the surface level is falling at a rate of one inch per second. So what does that mean? Surface level, that's basically the height, yeah? So we can say dh dt. It's falling, so that's a negative one inch per second, right? When the water is five inches deep, one h is five inches. Find the rate at which the water is being drained from the container. So what they want, Water being drained means it's going down. They want dv dt, right? Since they already said the word drained, they know that it's going to be a negative quantity, okay? So let's just find dv dt and then we'll answer the question. Now, volume of a cone. The formula is super similar to the volume of the right cylinder. Remember, it was pi r squared h. But obviously this won't have as much volume because there's all this that's missing on a cone. And whenever this happens, there's a factor of one third in the front. Why one third? If you go to Calc 3, you'll see. Okay, so just memorize that formula for now. Now let's check, can I take the derivative with respect to time? They gave me dh dt, I want dv dt. So that means the only variables I can work with are h and v. v, h, uh-oh, what's this r squared doing here? They didn't give me dr dt in this problem. They did the last time, so life was nice. Now they didn't. How do I get rid of it? Well, we're gonna set up similar triangles. What do I mean? Well, notice, we talked a minute ago that as the height is falling, this radius is changing, yes? And if you'll look carefully, let me clear this picture up so it's not so wild. If you look, say the, say the height is up to here and then the radius would be here. I have this tiny little right triangle sitting inside this bigger right triangle. And whenever that happens, these triangles are said to be similar, meaning they're in proportion. So the ratio between their corresponding sides is constant. So how's that going to help me? That means the ratio of the radius over the height, so 3 over 7 in the big triangle, is going to be equal to the ratio of the radius over the height in the baby triangle. 
and now we're in business because I can get R by itself here and then substitute it back into my volume equation. So I'm only working with V and H. So R is going to equal 3 over 7 times H. Let's plug that back in. So V is 1 third pi. Instead of R squared, I'm going to have 3 sevenths H squared times H. Let's clean this sucker up. So V is 1 third pi times 9H squared over 49 times H. And then that means V is 3 pi over 49 H cubed. Good. Now we can go ahead and take the derivative with respect to time, T. So always write D, D, T, D, D, T. On the left hand side, we're just going to have dv dt. 3 pi over 49, that's just a constant. No need for the product rule. When you have a constant, just bring it down. It comes along for the ride. And now I'm going to take the derivative of h cubed with respect to t. So derivative of h cubed is going to be 3h squared times dh dt. So what does this give me? This is going to be 9 pi over 49 h squared dh dt. Okay, well the worst is over. So that means dv dt is 9 pi over 49. What do I plug in for h? Now is when I use the h is 5 inches. Okay, so this is going to be times. 5 squared times dh dt, I know, is negative 1, right? They said the level was falling. So this is going to be 25 times 9, negative 225 pi over 49 inches cubed per second. That's the rate of change of volume. They already said the word drained which means they know that the volume is changing in the negative direction. So just to be super precise, I'm going to say water is being drained at a rate of 225 pi over 49 inches cubed per second. I'm not going to put a negative because the word drained already includes the negative sign. So you could think of it like this, oops, th this word right here is my minus sign. If the problem had used a neutral term, like at what rate is the water uh, changing, right? Is the volume changing? Changing's neutral. Then you would put the minus sign in your answer. But when they say drained, we already know that means going down. So don't put an extra negative depending on how picky your teacher is, you know, they may or may not take points off. They probably will. So be on the lookout. If you'd like more related rates examples, let me know. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I have full length video lectures for calculus one, two, and three. If you want to check out everything is organized into playlists on my YouTube channel. And you can also catch me on Instagram, TikTok, and I have a Patreon if you want access to some exclusive content. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.